This is Bill with Tandem Cross, making good guns great. We've been working with Brimstone Gunsmithing to bring you a totally revamped high performance trigger group for the Ruger 1022, including a competition ready Tandem Cross trigger. Here it is, the ultimate trigger upgrade kit. Brimstone's innovative new hammer and sear are cut from hardened tool steel using the most precise machining for increased durability. You get an extremely light trigger pull without sacrificing strong hammer sear engagement ensuring that your trigger pull stays the same no matter how many rounds you put through it. For our part, we're happy to finally release a victory trigger for the Ruger 1022. Just like our victory triggers for other guns, it has a flat textured face for an additional lightening of your trigger pull and better control, even with sweaty hands or in the rain. Altogether, this trigger kit can dramatically reduce your trigger pull weight to as low as under two pounds. There's a lot of parts to install, but it's not actually as daunting as it seems, so let me show you how it's done. But before we start, a quick word about compatibility. This trigger kit will work in all factory Ruger 1022 housings, including the BX trigger housing. However, our kit is designed to work with the original stock disconnector, so if you have a BX trigger kit in your gun, your BX disconnector won't fit into the new tandem cross trigger. Our recommendation is that you find your original stock trigger housing and install our trigger kit into that using your original stock disconnector. Now if you don't have a stock housing to go back to, or you just really want to use your BX trigger housing, you can still install our kit. You'll just have to buy an original style disconnector by itself, which you can do from the Ultimate Trigger Kit product page, and use that when you install our kit into your BX housing. The install process is the same no matter what housing you're using. So let's get to it. To do this install, you're going to need a thin punch and a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. To begin, as always, do a safety check. Make sure there's no round in the chamber, no mag inserted. Then you might want to make sure your product package has everything it's supposed to. There'll be a trigger, a hammer, and a sear in the foam. And behind the foam, there'll be a hardware bag. The hardware bag should have a spring, a set screw, an Allen wrench, and a small sleeve pin in it. Use the 5 30 seconds Allen wrench to remove the takedown screw. With the takedown screw out, the barrel and trigger group housing will easily separate from the stock. Use your punch to push these two pins out and remove the trigger assembly housing. Sometimes they come out easier from one side than the other. Make sure your safety is on fire, and then pull the trigger to drop the hammer. Then use your punch to push out the following three pins. This one at the top of the housing, which holds the ejector in place and keeps the hammer spring down. The hammer spring will jump around a bit when you push it out, but it won't actually fly out of the gun, so you can punch with impunity. The ejector should come out very easily. Now you'll want to take the mainspring out and then push this pin that holds the hammer in out. You may have to lift the bolt release plate up a little and then you'll be able to take the hammer and the spring that's on it out. 
like so. You might want to cover the top of the housing with your hand as you punch this last pin here out. There are some small parts that might jump out and you don't want to lose them. You can take the sear, disconnect, and trigger out now. There's also a spring and detent behind the trigger in the frame that you can take out. They won't be reinstalled, so put them away somewhere safe. There's a very small pin holding the disconnector in the trigger. Punch that out then remove the sear, spring, and disconnector. Now set your old trigger aside and grab your new one. Arrange your disconnector as shown and put it in the trigger and reinsert the pin. Now grab your new sear. Arrange that as shown. The longer rear leg of it will hook onto the short leg of the disconnector. And you can put that into the trigger. There's a counter bore here on the sear that the tiny spring that was between them before will set back into. Swing the disconnector down to trap the spring between it and the sear. Then insert the slave pin supplied in the hardware bag into the front hole on the trigger and through the sear. It can be a little fussy sometimes. If done correctly, the sear and disconnector should be able to click like this and should not be able to separate. Now get the nylon tipped set screw from the included hardware bag and screw it metal end first into the hole on the rear of the trigger. This is your post travel screw. This way, the nylon tip will be what contacts the frame of the gun. You may need to use the included Allen wrench 
from the front to get it all the way in. And you can adjust it to your heart's content once the gun is back together. Now get the supplied wire spring with the asymmetric legs. Put the loop in the spring around this circular cutout on the trigger so that the long leg is pointing downwards and sort of forwards. Before you set the trigger into the housing, Take a look at the right side down inside the housing. There's this ledge along the bottom beneath the bolt release plate. The long leg of the spring is going to lay on that ledge there. So now drop the trigger in, making sure that the spring leg is sliding into place along the ledge. You can use your punch to sort of guide it onto the ledge if you need to. Then grab the shortest of the three pins you punched out before. and push it back through. This is probably the most difficult part, so be patient. You'll have to push down on the whole assembly to get the holes to line up. You may find it helpful also to sort of pull down on the trigger. But once you get the holes lined up, the pin will go through and force the slave pin out. Now grab your hammer. Orient the hammer like so, with this slit pointing towards the rear. Then grab the wire spring with the symmetrically length legs that came on the hammer and put its loop around the right side of the bushing. The leg of the spring with this little bend in it needs to point forward. You'll have to lift the bolt release plate up slightly like you may have had to do when you were taking the hammer out. and then you can slide the hammer back in. Line the hole in its base up with the hole through the frame, then take the largest of the pins you punched out and push it back through. The hammer and the wire spring should all still be able to rotate freely. Now grab your mainspring. The wide end of the mainspring will sit in this hole that you can see at the rear of the frame. You'll be able to see the end of the mainspring through this hole from the outside if it's sitting in there correctly. So the wide end goes down into the hole and the thin end fits into the slot on the back of the hammer. You'll want to make sure it's all the way down at the bottom. 
then pull the hammer back, compressing the mainspring until the hammer locks into place. The wire spring should still be able to move freely. Now's a good time to test if everything is working right, so pull the trigger a few times to make sure. All right, take your remaining pin and push it into the housing and through the bolt release plate, but not all the way through the frame yet. Now grab your ejector. It's going to go back into the housing oriented like so with the hook pointing up and forwards. Push the pin into the hole on the leg of the ejector, but still don't push it all the way through the other side yet. Make sure the wire hammer spring is rotated all the way forward. The top leg will need to be pushed under that final pin as you slide it the rest of the way in. Now you can reassemble your gun. Put the trigger housing back in the receiver. And put the two large pins back through. Remember that just like they may have come out more easily from one side or the other, they may go back in more easily from one side or the other also. Now you can put your receiver back into the stock. If it seems like it's getting hung up, you may find that you need to try to get the safety to sit right between fire and safe, and then it should slide back in. Then screw your takedown screw back in. And you're done. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any tips or tricks, comments, suggestions about what you saw in this video, be sure to let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to get notifications whenever we upload new content, you can click the little bell button that's next to the subscribe button. You can also find us on other social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as our website www.tandemcross.com where you can buy this product and many more for many different kinds of guns. Until next time.